di ba last year, nagkaroon ng work from home setup eh. And I, and I hope you've pivoted already when it comes to worship from home setup, right? That you need to have that place. I, I've got that place. Minayari ko na yung guest room, all right? Nandoon na lahat ng kailangan ko, all right? Pinalayas ko, misis ko sa guest room. Sabi ko, akin tong kwarto na to. This is my place of worship. This is my... So, si Tammy, sa CR siya nagwa-worship, right? Ako sa guest room. And, uh, but you've got to have that. You've got to invest on the time. And can I encourage everyone who's online? You know, I've been through seminars, conference, uh, whole day talks online over Zoom. Can I just encourage you? Because this is just one hour. One hour to an hour, ten minutes. Now, I want to encourage you to make this really as a sacred time every night. Because you're, we're, we're all fasting. And I want you to have that mindset, Lord, 60 minutes lang. I'm giving you my 60 minutes, undivided attention, right? It means my laptop or my, 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 my phone is open, but I want to hear from you. And I believe God is a word for each and every one of us, right? One more thing that I, that I, that I felt like uh, was during the time of worship, you know, as, as, as I was praying, Isaiah 55 Verse 12 and 13, this is not my text. Later on, I'll share to you the text that we're going to look at. It says, so you go out in joy. You'll be led in a whole and complete life. The mountains and the hills will lead the parade, bursting with song. All the trees of the forest will join the procession, exuberant with applause. No more thistles, but giant sequoias. No more thorn bushes, but stately pines. Monuments to me, to God living and lasting evidence of God. The Bible says, we shall go out with joy and we shall be led forth in peace or shalom. You know, 2020, I, I, I was talking with somebody and they were asking me to preach in their, in their branch. And I said, what do you want me to talk about? And, and I said, well, you know, I have this talk about surviving the new normal. And she said something. She's not a Christian. She said something. She said, Alam mo, ayaw na ayaw ko na marinig yan. Ayaw na ayaw ko na marinig yung new normal, new normal. Nakamove on na ako. You know, don't minister na ako dun sa statement niya. Where so many people, and I want you to listen to this before we even jump off to the word. So many people, 2020 has been like, we've listened to a lot of voices that has dictated how we're going to live in the next two, three years. And sad to say, one of that loud, noise, noisy voice is the voice of fear. And I want you to imagine, if every day, fear, 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 lahat na lang, takot, 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 COVID, 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 virus, 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 virus. Every day, you hear that noise. You hear that news. You're going to live a life that's going to be dictated by the voice that you hear, the voice that you allow to permeate into your soul. And that's why I feel like the word for us today, not just today, but this year, uh, last, last week of December, I was asking, Lord, anong word mo for, for me, my family, and the church? And I felt like God gave a word for us. And I want to share this word. And allow me to share this word to you because I do hope and pray that this might be a word that you're going to embrace this year. That 2020 would be marked by this word in your life. And the word that God gave me, just an impression from the Spirit, was the word joy. 2020 will be a year of joy. And so I started looking at the word joy in Scripture. And joy happens in every season of life. In dark times, in good times, in COVID times, in non-COVID times, the Bible tells us to have that joy. Too much voice of fear already. Now we got to hear the voice of joy and the voice of praise. And I do hope and pray that everyone here, church, especially our victory group leaders, start leading your people in joy. Point them to the joy that is found in Christ. Why? Because the joy of the Lord will be your strength. And for the next five days, we're going to look at the word joy. 
And we believe that God wants to lead our church towards a different story this year. And it's going to be a story of joy. Right? So if you have your Bibles, turn it to Philippians chapter 4. I'm going, we're going to look at verse 4 to verse 6. Very familiar verse. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand or the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, make known your request to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Let's look at this verse, right? We're talking about Joy. Okay? So, late nga ang ano natin, no? Late nga to. Kayo na lang. Okay? So, let's go to verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. You know, in the Bible, rare, very rare, ang double command. Alam niyo yung double command? O inulit yung command. You've never heard the Lord said to Moses, Thou shall not kill. Again, I say, Thou shall not kill. Rare. One time, that's enough. But for this instance, and in rare instances, you've got a double command. And the double command is rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Now, what does rejoice mean? Right? Rejoice in the original Greek word. Ang ganda talaga pag you, you look at the very root word of, of, of the English word that was used to translate the Greek word. The word rejoice is to delight in God's grace or to experience God's grace and favor, right? To rejoice, which is a command, is the Lord is commanding us to delight in God's, what? Grace. Matuwa ka raw sa grasya ni Lord. Be happy that God moves in your behalf. There's so much grace. Delight in that grace. And it literally means to experience God's grace and favor. So I was trying to study the text, and, and it hit me. Like, this is one word, rejoice, and here's the definition. The definition is a verb. It's an action word. It's a command. You have to delight in God's grace or to literally experience God's grace and favor. I know it's day one, and I'm sorry, but I have to do this illustration because this is the only way I can illustrate this verse. Alam niyo pag kumakain tayo sa, you know, when, when you're hungry and you want to eat at Gloria Mary's or Choi Garden, okay? So when you eat, it's a verb, tama ba? I, I, I ate Chinese food, right? So I go to the restaurant and I ate Chinese food, right? But, when I eat Chinese food, especially in Choi or Gloria, what happens? Pag sa Gloria, pagkakain ko na papa, Gloria! Di ba? Ang, I literally experience God's grace and favor. The command is, eat in Gloria. But the end result of that one word is, you literally experience Gloria. Right? Parang magkadikit. It's a command, yet you experience something when you follow that command. Rejoice! So pag may taong lumapit sa'yo at sinabi, Bro, rejoice! Yeah? Nakatingin ako kay Inoy ngayon. Bro, rejoice 2021! Bro, it's gonna be your year, bro. Andito ka, nag-register ka. May double anointing sa'yo this year. Hindi tulad ng mga naka-zoom. Iba to. Imagine mo, lahat ng pastor mamaya, ilay hands ka dahil ikaw lang yung umaten. <laughs> so, to rejoice, when I say to Noy, who might feel like, oh, these are my goals in life, you know, and ah, oh, this is too much for me. You know, I answered the manual and I felt actually more discouraged because the faith goal that I had, I, it's really by faith. I don't know. Malungkot siya. And I approach my brother and say, Brother Noy, Rejoice. It, it means, Noy, delight in God's grace. Hindi ikaw to, si God to. 
And once you start doing that, you what? You experience literally God's grace and favor. I love this text. And then he says, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Parang walang connect, di ba? Rejoice in the Lord always, gentleness. Rejoice, gentleness. So again, I had to look to different versions. I still don't know what it means, right? So we go back to the word gentleness. Gentleness means in the sense of relaxing strict standards when that is necessary to keep the spirit of the law. That's the original meaning of gentleness. Wala kasi English word, yan yung pinakamalapit. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. So I rejoice always. I live under God's grace and I literally experience it. And the Bible says, I need to be gentle. Let my gentleness be evident to all. In short, hindi ako uptight. Kailangan ako gawin eh. Relax. Chill. Get the spirit of the law. The law will tell you, and, and he'll move on here. He says, the Lord is near. And then he goes to a verse that we love mentioning to people. An advice we give to everyone, which is what? Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Diba? Sis, wag kan mag-worry, mag-prayer meeting na lang tayo. Right? That's the advice. But there's a connection between that verse and this verse. So, Paul was saying, let your gentleness be evident to all. Why? Because the Lord is, andito lang si Lord. Chill, chill. God's moving. Masyadong yung, yung, yung focus mo na sa law. And what was the command? The command was to what? Do not worry about anything. But in everything by prayer and petition. What was he saying? You know, when, when Christians are filled with joy, so many problems that you have now is actually not a problem. Right? Marami kang gustong di mo makuha, kaya hindi ka joyful. Pero pag joyful ka, malalaman mo, maraming bagay hindi ko pala kailangan para maging joyful. So when you focus on the, the law, the law tells us, do not worry, ha? Worry is a sin. No, 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 no. Your focus should be the spirit of the law. What is the spirit of the law? Rejoice. When you rejoice, worry flees. When you rejoice, Wala nang worry. Bakit? You're rejoicing. May nakita ka naman tao nagre-rejoice na nagwa-worry at the same time. Hi! Wala, di ba? Weird. Okay? Parang may double personality. Paul was saying, so many things as a Christian, so many sins, we can actually say no to because we're joyful. Rejoice. So many mental health issues, sadness, happens when we forget joyfulness. That's why my advice is don't worry. Be joyful. No? Hindi happy. Happy kasi circumstantial. Eh. Joy is anytime. Don't worry. Be joyful. To be anxious is to be pulled apart. That's worry. You're pulled apart. I want to feel this way, but I feel this way. Right? You know, I want this to happen, but I'm worrying this might happen. I want to have fellowship, pero baka magka-COVID. You're worrying. You don't know what to do. You're so afraid. You're, you're pulled apart. You can't do anything. Joy. Comes worry flees. Do not be anxious about anything. Let's go back to the text. But what? By prayer and petition. What do you mean by prayer and petition? Petition means what? Let's go to the next slide. Ibig sabi ng petition is arising out of a personal need. 
that sense of lack and want, I petition you, Lord. Pinipetition ko, Lord. Please, sagutin mo, Lord, by that kind of prayer. And I love fasting because in fasting week, we get to petition to the Lord so desperate that I'm so hungry, God. I petition. And what do we petition? And can I, can I suggest the number one thing we need to petition this year is we need to petition joy. Lord, give me joy. Lord, teach me to rejoice in the Lord always. Consider it pure joy when you face trials of many kind. Lord, that kind of joy. That kind of joy. Petition joy. Lord, I need joy. Everybody's sad. I petition joy over my family. When was the last time you've ever laughed? Tumawa ka ba noong 2020? Ako umiyak ako pero madami rin akong tawa noong 2020. Right? Have you had community and fellowship? Have you honed the friendship and built deeper relationship? Why? That will bring joy. Have you spent time with God with a worship from home set up? That would bring joy. Petition joy and say, God, give me joy. And tonight, we're going to do that. In your own room. Kaya yung mga nasa bahay, lock nyo muna pintuan nyo kasi baka magwala kayo, no? Because we're going to petition joy. We want you to laugh like you've never laughed before. I want that inner joy to burst out of you knowing that God has been so good to me, right? That God has amazingly provided and sustained my family joy even in the midst of all the chaos. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. We're going to pray. I want to lead you in a prayer. 2021, year of joy. Yung lalabas sa ating mga bibig, right, is joy. The stories that would come out, even in the midst of pain and darkness, joy. Why? The joy of the Lord is our strength. You will go out with joy. You'll be led forth with peace. When everybody's going out with sadness and being led forth in fear, Christians, we're different. We've got an amazing God who is the source of our joy, who is the source of our laughter. Napansin niyo ba? Pag iniintroduce niya sarili niya sa Old Testament, I'm the God of Abraham, of Isaac, of Jacob. I'm the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac, which means laughter, joy. This is the God that we worship. We will petition joy. Can we petition joy? If you need to kneel down, because we're going to petition joy. Lord, let that joy come like never before in my life, in this church, in my leadership, in my fathering, in my parenting, in my homeschooling, in my studies, joy. It will be marked with joy. How I deal with problems, joy. I want you to petition joy right now. Ask the Lord out of a sense of lack and need, petition joy. Lord, I need joy. Lord, give me joy. Spirit of God, come and bring joy to every room right now, for every home where that Zoom is open. Spirit of joy, come. Let laughter come back again, Lord, to our houses, our homes, our streets. Lord, let joy come even in the midst of pain, in the midst of trial, joy, in the midst of suffering, joy. We petition joy. If you're with your, with your spouse, you're with your kids, I want you to start praying together as a family. And I want you to say, Lord, our family, Lord, will be marked with joy this year. Joy come. Joy enter our households. Lord, joy enter our streets again. Joy enter our church. Joy enter our, joy enter our soul. 
joy come. Let there be rejoicing in the morning, God. Let there be rejoicing at night. Let there be rejoicing. Again, I say rejoice. Let joy come. Joy come. Count your blessings, brothers and sisters, and let joy come. Let joy come to your homes right now. Lord, in our rooms, let the joy come. May we look at your goodness, your greatness, your blessing. More than all the problems that we have, may we look at you, Jesus, our constant, our hero, our Lord, our rescuer, our redeemer, our sustainer, joy. Oh, let joy come. Let the joy of the Lord be our strength, God. Joy come. Lord, that people might see the difference this year as the spirit of joy comes. Let gentleness be evident to all as we get the spirit of joy in our hearts, in our lives. Joy come. Joy come. That's what I said. Let your room now be a worship from home setup. And I want you to pray to the Lord. If you need to lock that door so that nobody comes in to disturb you, do that tonight. We're going to worship the Lord today. And continue to ask for joy. Just say, Lord, let joy come. Let joy come. Let joy come right now. In the name of Jesus. Everybody in this room, I know we're quite few, but I want you to worship with joy tonight. Spirit, come. Spirit come, let joy come in the name of Jesus.